Are the Mariners gearing up for a run at Shohei Otani? One Mariners beat reporter thinks so. Let's talk about it. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Friday, December 16th, 2022. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. The link is well as our social accounts is in the description below on the show today we're playing all the hits Shohei Otani Brian Reynolds even Tyler O'Neill all courtesy of yesterday's extra innings podcast with Ryan Divish Larry Stone and Adam Jude and Colby all three of these guys believe the Mariners have been reluctant to hand out a big contract this offseason in order to make a run at Shohei Otani next free agency period so exactly Ooh. one year from now yeah 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 uh you know just the you know one of the greatest baseball players of arguably all time oh the guy who can't hit justice sheffield that guy ah that's right, right. that's right yeah 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 one for yeah, 11 silly silly silly, silly me for going on yeah silly me for going on the high end of course uh justice sheffield's son shohei otani so what do you think about this man what do you because this has been something that a lot of Mariners fans I know in our comments have mm -hmm. speculated have theorized could be the case here and now you're hearing it from arguably the most in tune Mariners beat reporter there is in Ryan Divish and Larry Stone and Adam Jude also agreed with this sentiment so what do you think about waiting until 2024 to make your big free agency splash with Otani I don't believe them uh, is basically how it goes. Now I'm not saying Divish is making anything up, except for this. No, <laughs> like I said, Divish uh, clearly, you know, feels one way, but I don't agree with him, and I don't think he has sources to back this up. I think this is speculation. Um, I just I look at Otani, and like obviously, do the Mariners like Otani? Yes, they were all in trying to get him the first time. By all accounts, they finished in second, and it wasn't because they didn't offer him the most money. It wasn't because they didn't make the most sense. It was about Otani wanting to go create his own legacy and not follow, uh, you know, the legacy of Ichiro and Iwakuma and others here in Seattle. So that that's pretty much what it was. Um, so he picked the Angels. He regrets that, whether he'll admit it or not. He does because they wasted the six years of his career um, for nothing. So <clears throat> I, I think he's going to leave. I don't think he's going to sign an extension. Um, I do expect the Mariners will be heavily reported to have interest in him because they did last time and anytime a japanese born player comes on the open market everybody immediately says the mariners are a contender um for reasons but uh the thing with otani is yes you want him but there's a tipping point where you're paying otani so much that you're hurting the rest of your roster particularly if you're not a team that is going to go out and and push you know the competitive balance tax every year and the mariners are not going to be that team as much as we may want them to, they're not going to. So at some point, the return on Otani is actually hurting your team more than it's helping. And we're talking about a guy who is going to have, you know, 10 legitimate suitors, including big market teams like the Yankees, the Mets, the Dodgers, yeah. the Giants, um, you know, maybe Boston. Like there are going to be a lot of teams with deep pockets who are going to go after Otani. And so the, the price, like I would be shocked, was less than. $550 million. Yeah. Um, and at that point, let's say it's nine years, $500 million or 10 years, $500 million just for, for simple math. I, that's a lot of money to put into one player. Now it's, it's arguably the best player in baseball, yeah. but still you have to consider like it. I have other concerns too, not with Otani's performance necessarily. Although there are some things that you need to watch there for how long can he, can he keep doing both? Yeah. Uh, how long can the arm hold up? This is a guy who's missed a lot of time on the mound. So yeah. it's not like he's, you know, 200 innings every single year. 
Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later on because I do want us to kind of mm-hmm. weigh the the factors, the pros and the cons of signing Otani because there are you know obviously there's a lot of pros, but there are some cons to it as well. So we'll get into that uh, just a bit. But really, for me, like I'm not questioning Divish uh, here, but I the reason that I don't necessarily buy this is just because it doesn't like it kind of goes against the the Mariners' philosophy. Like completely skipping over this off season, which is essentially what they're saying the Mariners are doing, right? They they've been reluctant to hand out the big contract this off season in order to make that run at Otani next off season. That just seems like that goes against their philosophy, especially when you don't have a great chance to land Shohei Otani. No, you listed all those teams that are likely going to be in his market. Again, this is one of the greatest baseball players of all time. He's going to have a massive market. It's going to get to ridiculous levels. And there's stuff on the financial side that we'll get into that that makes me think that the Mariners probably aren't going to, to do this. But just from a philosophical standpoint, this makes no sense from the Mariners organization. It goes against everything that they've really been about to more or less punt free agency, if that's actually what's going on here. To more or less punt free agency mm. this year in order to have a chance to go after this guy next year it just seems weird just, to me by the way though i don't buy that narrative that they they're not spending money this year so they can spend it next year because right. a they are spending a little bit of money and b if you give out one-year deals which the Mariners have acquired guys on one-year deals all that money goes away after this season so well and, that's the thing too right it's like i don't think that they're doing that right like i don't think that they're punting free agency because again that goes against their uh, you mm-hmm. know for this purpose at least like i don't think that the right. reason that they haven't signed trey turner or carlos correa is because they want to go after prices, Joey Otani. yeah it's because of the prices it's because right. of you know the year commitments and all that it's not because they want to go after otani i don't buy that i don't Right. I, I think there's something to be said about like, well, we don't want to commit $350 million. And again, it would be more. You have to beat the other team's offers. And those other teams, at least two of those guys, the big contracts, they left money on the table to go somewhere else. So um, it, it, it's one of those things where you have to beat those deals. Uh, and if you do say, I don't know, let's say they gave Aaron Judge $400 million and he agreed to take it from the Mariners, but not the Padres. Yeah. Uh, but let's say they did that, right? Well, now I don't think you can even like pretend to be in Otani's class, but I don't think that's why they avoided Aaron Judge or, or you know, uh, Turner. Or any. I just think they looked at those guys and said they're not worth that money. No. And so we overpay here. I mean, we're completely out on the market, but they're not just saying like, no, we can't spend any money this winter because we need to save for Otani. That's not happening. It's the prices, man. The prices are ridiculous. Um, and like I said, I, I don't know if Divish has like hard evidence that the Mariners are going to be all in. Like I, I, I know John Stanton likes Otani. I know that the Mariners front office likes Otani. Who doesn't? Right. That's all we have. And that's all we're speculating on. So yeah, I, I don't think, I think Divish is uh, partly right. I think the Mariners are going to be interested. And I do think they'll make a, a sizable offer on Otani. I just think they're going to get blown out of the water because the Mariners are going to try as they should and find like the perfect number the perfect years. And and they're going to try and really like, we need to find a way to add Otani without sacrificing down the line. And I don't know if that's possible with the amount of money he's about to make. So we'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Built Bar. You got to try this. I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. They're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. I'm talking as low as 130 calories. Just sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life forever. I'm not kidding. There will be a time before you try these new built flavors and then the magical, wonderful time afterwards. And you're probably wondering which flavor's my favorite. 
That is an an answerable question to say the least. They're all unbelievable and they're all different. So you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built, you got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5 at built.com. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. So... Let's weigh the pros and cons of signing Shohei Otani here. I think the first thing that I want to say is this kind of contradicts the crest comments from Jerry Depoto, you know, a couple of weeks ago, which sent everyone into a frenzy on Mariners Twitter. But what he was saying with those comments is that, you know, at that point at, you know, 2025, 2026, Julio Rodriguez's money is going to start kicking in. Cal Raleigh, uh, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, their contracts are going to be near expiration. Ty France's contract is going to be at expiration. Uh, that's 2025, I believe, is the last year of club control on A. Eugenio Suarez. So there's going to be a lot of decisions that have to be made and a lot of money that's going to have to be spent there just to retain guys. Uh, and you look at their 2025 payroll as is right now, they have $125 million committed for 2025, which is the most in baseball right now. So. Say you add Shohei Otani, and I think, I mean, you look at these prices right now, and the AAVs haven't been that ridiculous for the most part, but this is one of the greatest baseball players of all time who basically counts as two players in one guy. Like, it has to be like a $50 million, you know, AAV or something like that. It has to be, you know, and even Jude and Stone and Divish uh, speculated that it's going to be somewhere between 50 to $60 million AAV. So you add that, let's say that it's $50 million. All of a sudden you're at $175 million, which is basically the max that they've been at. On top of that, they're going to have to extend Cal Raleigh, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, who all play premium positions, and mm-hmm. possibly Ty France. I mean, like, they should do it. Like, they should be willing to spend and, and, you know, go over $200 million because they have a billionaire owner and all that, but they just haven't shown any signs of being willing to do that. They're not going to. And and so, yeah, so I don't, like, this is really where the, the, the buck begins uh, begins and ends here for the Mariners and Otani, right. for me at least. Well, right, that's what you're talking about, $175 million, and that's to, like, seven guys you still have to put out 19 more guys. And if, you know, even if, even if John Stanton bumps his, you know, commitment to $200 million a year, like you, so what you have $25 million to find 18 more players. Like, come on, you sign Otani uh, to like a, a long-term deal, which is what he's going to get. Uh, you're probably sacrificing Kirby Gilbert and Raleigh to make it happen. Would you trade Gilbert uh, Raleigh and, and Kirby for Shohei Otani? Cause I wouldn't like Otani is worth 10 wins. Those three guys are probably worth 12 in any given year. Like it just, you get to a point where again, you get to the tipping point where you have to think about the 26 man roster, not the one guy that you really want. What's best for the 26 man roster. Well, the angels prove it. You can't just pay one guy, you know, an insane amount of money and then fill out the rest of your roster with an adequate team. Mike Trout's been to the playoffs once in his entire career. Otani's never been. And, by the way, the Angels go out and they spend money on on you know complimentary pieces. So it's not like they just did, you know, they were just, oh yeah, trout and we're done. No, they didn't do that. They they went out and they got Rodon and, and they got Arendon. They got all these guys, and none of them have worked because you have to overpay for mediocre players. So it, it just you get to a point where there's a tipping point where Otani becomes worth it, worth it, worth it to he's hurting your team with the contract because your owner is not willing to do what it takes to get he's i'll say stanton is not willing to go all in there is a limit to what john stanton is willing to do to win um you know to be fair that's true of like 28 other owners so uh, but there's a limit and so at some point otani is taking away five six good free agent uh or good trade like guys who are making money you're taking away four or five players to afford otani and Otani himself, as we have seen, is not good enough to get a team to the playoffs by himself, let alone win the World Series. So I don't see it. I just I don't see yeah. any. I I honestly I don't think it's smart when you when you if you can get Otani for like four and three hundred, fine. I don't care. Do that. 
but you can't. So at some point, you know, 12 years, 15 years, it doesn't matter how long the contract is. We're talking about, you know, 50 million, $500 million at least. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like spreading that over 20 years, like that is such a big hit that you're, it's going to cost you up and down your roster. And I don't, I don't think there's any one player in baseball who is worth sacrificing, let's say four or five, like good starters. And I mean like starting pitchers, high leverage relievers, uh, you know, these are major leaguers, not prospects we're talking about. We're talking about Gilbert and, and Kirby and, and, and Raleigh and, and maybe France. And, and I mean, I don't know, what if you acquire Brian Reynolds, you're going to sacrifice him too to afford Otani. You get to a point where it just doesn't make baseball sense to give a guy mm -hmm. that big of a contract. And, and, you know, the Mariners I think are, are there. I just, I don't see Jerry. I think, again, I think they'll make an offer, but I think it's going to get, I don't want to say laughed at, but it's going to be so below what some team that's just going to blow. Like, it doesn't matter. We need Otani. We'll figure out the rest later. Like, yeah, that's I what think, bad teams do. Honestly, I think what, what the offer would be is something like three one fifty. Right. And I, I think, you know, maybe you can get creative with it and say like, because what happened, what happens? Okay. Let's say Otani, you give Otani that big contract and then he has another uh, UCL injury and he has to have a Tommy John or he has a shoulder issue that pops up mm -hmm. and he can't pitch anymore. Well, now you're paying $50 million to a, a, you know, a really good hitter, but not like an elite of the elite type of hitters. He's not Juan Soto. So like if he can't pitch, how valuable is he? Or if he can't, if he can't swing the bat for whatever reason, how valuable is he? Well, yeah. If you take away one of his, you know, amazing skills, he's not a fifty million dollar year player. He's not a fifty million dollar year pitcher. He's not a fifty million dollar year hitter. He has to have both for him to have value. And if you give him a fifteen year deal, thirteen year deal, ten year deal, odds are by the end of that deal, or maybe even by the middle of it, he's doing one or the other. He's not doing both. So. Mm -hmm. Can you have a creative contract where it's like incentive based on innings pitched and, and this and that? Well, if you're Otani, why would you do that when, you know, the Mets are going to give me 500 million guaranteed? You know what right. I mean? So I just don't see it. Yeah. And the thing too is like, all right, if you want to lower the AAV, you're going to have to really get aggressive on the years. And so like, mm -hmm. I mean, Carlos Correa just got 13 years. So what's stopping Shohei Otani? Again, one of the greatest baseball players of all time from getting 15 years. Yeah. He's going to be 29 years old when he hits the open market uh, next right. year. Uh, he won't turn 30 until July, July of 2024. 5th. Yeah. So you really want to pay or you really want to have Shohei Otani on your books until age 44? I mean, like you're going to get the immediate gratification, which is great. And you might very well win a World Series or even two, you know, in the first five years of that contract. But then you're going to have to deal. Oh, you because have to. <laughs> Well, I you mean, have yeah, to you have to series. you have to you have to so but the, you know the thing that you mentioned though is like he's he's not going to do both forever he's not going to be a two-way player forever no. he might even he might not even be a two-way player for the majority of a 15-year contract it's almost you know it's more likely than not that that would be the case and more likely than not he's going to pick hitting over pitching and so at that point, like, because he can't play the field, so you're paying a lot of money and handcuffing yourself for a decade plus to a DH. Right. <clears throat> and, but again, like, offensively, he's more or less Teoscar Hernandez. Like, he's a good hitter. He is not an elite hitter. I think there's this idea that, like, oh, he's the best hitter in baseball and the best pitcher in baseball. He's neither of those things. He's a very good pitcher. He's a very good hitter, which makes him unique. But he is not like, like if he was just a pitcher next year, we'd be talking about $35 million a year. And, you know, assuming he was healthy, which again, not a, not a safe assumption there. If he was just a bat, we'd be talking 22 to $25 million a year. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's both. And that's what makes him so valuable. And that's why he is worth $50 million a year until he, can't do both then you're stuck yeah. and, and you're overpaying a guy so i think if you're the mayors you have to have clauses built into that contract that says if you don't pitch you know we're, your salary drops to this if you don't hit your salary drops that you have to protect yourself if you're the mariners and i don't think other teams are going to be i don't know smart enough is the right word i don't know if other teams are going to be savvy enough to put that in there 
like into the contract language. And if they're just not going to be like, well, we just want Otani. And, and so here's $550 million guaranteed. We don't care if you hit and pitch. Yeah. yeah I don't think it's really what. about being savvy. Or I think it's just, they, I think some teams just not going to care. Right. Like we just want, they're just going to be we so just want desperate. Shoei Otani. So yeah, screw, screw the three years yeah. after this. We'll figure that out later. And it's like, well, okay, you can do that. And, and that's certainly the, what the fans would want, you know, the Mariners to do, but it's not smart. It doesn't make baseball yeah. sense. I just, I don't buy it. I mean, it would be great. Like, don't get me wrong. Whatever the contract looks like, I'm doing backflips. Oh. So the Mariners sign Shoei Otani. Like, don't don't get us wrong here. Oh, dude, we will do emergency <laughs> pod after emergency we pod. We might do like five emergency we'll say the pods. Same, we'll be like, yeah, we'll be like, don't worry about 2027, guys. We'll get to it when we get to it. We'll do the same thing we're saying yeah, yeah, you shouldn't exactly. do. Like, Ex- absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Uh, but let it be known right now that I am opposed to the idea as it's being uh, currently like yes. put out there that like, yeah, just $550 million, 10 years and like no, no incentives, no clauses, no opt out, none of that. Like just a straight contract for Otani. I'm out because I, I mostly because I don't trust John Stan to continue to spend after a certain point. That's yeah, really yeah, what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a whole nother issue and a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Uh, so on the extra innings podcast, uh, the trio also talked about, uh, Brian Reynolds and Tyler O'Neill. So we're going to talk about those guys in just a moment, but real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by the NHTSA. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. But nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You tell your car. What if you kill someone? Everyone knows about the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So, if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. All right, so Divish, Jude, and Stone also talked about Brian Reynolds and Tyler O'Neill. I told you, we're playing all the hits. So we're talking about Brian o- uh, Brian Reynolds. I don't know O'Neill there. Brian Reynolds for the, I don't know, millionth time on this show. Uh, so if you're tired of it, apologies, but we're talking about it. And there's some pretty interesting information here. You know, it's interesting to me, Colby. I feel like Divish has been oddly... Not necessarily optimistic, but he hasn't been dismissive of the Reynolds stuff like he typically is with certain things. And that's especially weird considering like everything else we're hearing about Reynolds that they're asking for a Juan Soto type return and all that. Like the Mariners can't yeah. provide that. Like, you know. But but then it you shouldn't. hear from Divish that like he kinda he's acting like it's actually a real possibility here. So he said that the Pirates are expected to take offers on Reynolds next week, starting next week, uh, that they've been reluctant to do so up to this point, but that's expected to change next week. Uh, he also said that last year the Mariners offered a package of Jerry Kelnick, Noel V. Marte, and one other player for Reynolds. Uh, so... The one other player being hugely significant. Yeah, 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 that would be... <laughs> very, yeah. it's, it's a big difference if they... If they offer Cade Marlowe versus if they offered Edwin Arroyo. Yeah, or, we have no idea um, what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, take this with so, a grain of salt. It was either a is either a decent offer or it was a bad one, depending on what the other player is. Yeah. So that's Yeah. <laughs> that's a wide variation there. And, but, I mean, even Kelnick a year ago didn't have a ton of value after the rough year that he had. He had more value right. than he does now, but, yeah. it Yeah. Probably. Um, yeah. All right. So... Going off of that, right, the Mariners don't have a Noel V. Marte anymore in their farm system. They don't have a, a Ned no. Arroyo type prospect in their farm system, really, either. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, depending on who you talk to, right? Because Arroyo was, was getting gassed up quite a bit this past year um, by a lot of outlets. Yep. Some also, you know, thought that he was kind of in that Harry Ford range. So maybe you could say that they have an Ned Arroyo and Harry Ford mm-hmm. or Cole Young or whatever. Um, but yeah, so... If that's kind of the starting point, right, 
I mean, w- what do you think about this? What What is, uh, like, where do the Mariners go from here now? Now that Brian Reynolds has one year less of club control, where, where, so right. uh, assuming that the Mariners are going to make an offer next week, like, w- what do they start with? Mm-hmm. Probably what they started with last year and then they build from there. Um, again, like you mentioned, it's it's half of a few it's one less playoff run the Mariners get to make with Brian Reynolds. So and Brian Reynolds was good last year, but he wasn't great. You know, he, he wasn't at all. And in twenty twenty year twenty twenty, he was terrible. Small sample size, but still. So it's not a superstar player, right? Let's let's get that out of the way. He's he's probably solidly an all star most years, but not every year. Um I think they start pretty similar to what what they did last year. Again, without knowing what that other player is, <laughs> that that's a huge uh, point in this. But I think what's interesting um, about Divish's comments is <clears throat> kind of the the way the Mariners are seemingly willing to just wait for Reynolds to you know officially get shopped, and I don't think they do that unless they feel like they have a legitimate shot of getting him, which leads me to believe and, and, you know, maybe cope or I don't know what this is, but it does kind of lead me to believe that there were some advanced talks with Pittsburgh last July, or there were some, some good conversations with Pittsburgh last July that says maybe they think that Pittsburgh likes a few of their players more than, you know, us, the masses would believe that they do. So I, I do wonder if like, I, more from Divish's comments, like the fact that the the Mariners are willing to wait, wait it out for Reynolds um, when they have other holes they can fill. And, and apparently they're just waiting and waiting and waiting for the trade market to kick up and apparently waiting quite long for, for Brian Reynolds to become available. It makes me think that they must believe that they have a pretty good shot of getting him yeah. at a price that they like. So I, I think that's what I took away from Divish's comments on Reynolds. Um, you know, because if the Mariners were like, okay, well, they just they weren't even going to talk to us last year without Kirby or or Gilbert or Raleigh or or Julio like mm. like if they weren't going to talk to us about those then like there's no reason to to wait around uh, so it leads me to believe that their offer last year was at the very least something Pittsburgh countered or or you know tweaked or changed or they they like this but they don't like this and now the Mayors feel like they have you know that which Pittsburgh wasn't sure they had last year I, I don't know mm-hmm. so makes me feel like Seattle maybe thinks they have a better shot than than we think they have but um yeah it just I don't know we've been over the the Brian Reynolds trade package I it's I don't see it without a three team deal but if if they do then it's going to be like Ford, Hancock, Miller, Trammell, Kel, or Kelnick um and maybe that maybe that draft pick or something right. like that. So Tyler O'Neill is the other name that I believe Divish mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. That's interesting because uh, obviously, I mean, Tyler O'Neill, former Mariners prospect, acquired uh, or traded to the uh, Cardinals for Marco Gonzalez uh, a few years back, uh, had one really good season uh, in 2021 where he was a 5.6 F4 player. Um, really good corner uh, outfield defender. Uh, and he just exploded in 2021 to the tune of a 286, 352, 560 triple slash line with a 144 WRC plus. But aside from that, hasn't really been able to stay healthy. He's only played over 100 games once. Um, honestly, Tyler O'Neill's like track record very similar to Brandon Lau when you look at it. Um, <laughs> just kind of realized that when I was looking at his fan graphs page. Um, so he's got let's see here he's got two years left of club control uh this would be a platoon option with jared kelnick but o'neill can also play full-time if kelnick doesn't work out um again good defender you need to get better defensively uh in a corner outfield spot i've talked about how much you know i would like for them to focus on run prevention with their outfield addition if they don't land someone like brian reynolds um at least a little bit uh but yeah so what do you, what do you think about O'Neill? What do you think that would cost? Um, yeah, what do you just what do you think about the player? I think O'Neill for Marco Gonzalez. Um, <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, uh, there's like kind of trade backs. It, 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 like it kind of, I can kind of talk myself into it. It shouldn't happen. It should not have. The Cardinals should if, not do that. But I can kind of talk myself if into Marco it. Marco was. 
Yeah, if Marco was like 2020 Marco, then yeah, maybe yeah. it happens, but he it, 2021 and 2022 yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> So O'Neal himself is a really good fit because the the nice thing about O'Neal is if you can get him back to, well, 2021 yeah. was the breakout year. If you can get him back to that, then he's probably your left fielder. And then you have Julio in center and you have Kelnick in right. And, and you have Teoscar as your DH. And, and you know, if, if Kelnick doesn't hit, then you have Teoscar as your right fielder. And and then you bring in another guy, you know, Michael Brantley, J.D. Martinez, you know, Will Myers, A.J., whatever. And that's your DH. So. Um, I, I think he makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's fine to start him as kind of a Kalanick platoon partner, but you do need to give him at bats against right-handed pitching mm-hmm. at least enough to determine like which version of Tyler O'Neill you're getting. Um, I'll say this, if, if going from a Jesse Winker, Julio Hanniger defensive outfield to Kelnick, Julio O'Neill is probably the biggest improvement any team will make at any part of baseball <laughs> this year. That that's, you know, I mean, O'Neill's a gold glover. Uh, Kelnick is very good out there in a the corner, and, and Julio's at least average to above average yeah. in the center field. Uh, that That's a massive jump. So I like the idea of O'Neill. I'm not sure what he would cost. St. Louis, kind of weird. You know, the, their farm system's this never great. Their major league like team where, is always pretty yeah, you good. you subtract from your bullpen again. Very similar right. idea to the Teoscar but, trade. Right. I mean, would you do like... Like, would you do like Seawall and 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 pick thirty for O'Neill, or would you do like Festa and pick thirty? Like, you might need to. You, who's you, the guy you might not need? If you trade Seawall, you might not need to include pick thirty. Um, I mean, again, Seawall's one of those guys. Like, he's impossible to know because I feel like there's one team out there that is like, yes, like, mm-hmm. yep, we want Paul's, and then there's probably another team that's like, no, like we can replace, we can find right. false Paul Seawald in five minutes, like. So I don't know how the Cardinals would view him, but I do think maybe this is where pick 30 could come yeah. to play as a guy like O'Neill. We've talked a lot about, you know, pick 30 for like one year guys like Snell or, or, or Ian Happ. Um, why not get a two year guy out of that pick? And it's a guy whose value is down a little bit. Um, the Cardinals have some pretty good outfield depth, if I'm remembering correctly, um, especially and they have some younger guys, too, that they really like. So. It's kind of one of those, you know, so, tough. Yeah, uh, yesterday, I don't know if you listened to my chat with Joe Doyle yesterday, but Joe said that he would value the top 30 pick as basically like a Bryce Miller type of prospect. Right. Right. And, and Joe also says that Bryce Miller, he thinks is like a top 80 prospect yeah. Yeah. in baseball. So if Joe thinks that the pick should be valued as essentially a top 100 prospect, which would be great. Um, and I'm not saying Joe's wrong because he would know more than I would. It it seems a little wishful thinking to me, but again, you know, like the Brewers traded a competitive rounds B pick for two and at three years of Omar Narvaez. Like that's not nothing. That's pretty good value. And this is a competitive balance round a pick. And you get, you're basically giving a team an extra pick in two and a half million dollars mm-hmm. extra to yeah. spend on the draft. That that is going to have value. And I think the Cardinals already have a, a competitive balance round pick. I think mm-hmm. a pick, but Hey, you could have two. Yeah, like, yeah. how about that? So I, I think O'Neill is, is really interesting. I just don't know where the deal is because I don't know St. Louis well enough to know how they feel about their bullpen and their rotation and the rest of their outfield. Um, I can say with confidence, they feel pretty good about their catcher first base and third base spots. So, and probably second base and shortstop. So I, I think they're pretty good on their infield, but um, I don't know about their outfield and their rotation. So, uh, or their bullpen, mm. uh, it, it's kind of tough. And everybody views relievers differently, so it's just it's hard to exactly nail down an O'Neill pack an O'Neill package. But I do think he's a guy who makes a lot of sense for Seattle. Galaxy brand trade Colton Wong to the Cardinals for Tyler O'Neill. I'm gonna mute you now. <laughs> and then sign Dansby Swanson. Right, that's what we all want. Mariners Twitter. Ty, my my cursor is over the mute button. All right, all right, so all right, all right. enough, sa- n- enough. Sa- right, sa- say less, say less, say less, say less. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we we hop off of here? Uh, no, not really. I, I think O'Neill's a really good idea. Um, I, I would just that would just be so much fun <laughs> to have Tyler yeah. O'Neill back on this. The dude's a character, um, and he's he's a fun player when he's good. Uh, so I I think that would be awesome, but. Uh, you know, it is worth mentioning that today is the uh, the last the last uh, 
the end of the last week in which we will do five shows. Oh, yeah, we should guys, mention that. So. Yeah, so uh, starting Monday, we are going to three shows a week until Pitchers and Catchers report. Uh, that's just a thing that the mm -hmm. whole Locked On MLB network is doing. Uh, so uh, yep. we get a little bit of a break, which is uh, nice. And uh, yeah, uh, but we're mostly, this is mostly going to be, you know, Mailbag Mondays, Fan Fiction Fridays for the most part. I know we didn't do a Fan Fiction Friday today, but the, uh, the Dimish stuff was really interesting so we wanted to talk about that uh but yeah so we'll we'll be doing this for the next couple months uh we'll be posting monday wednesday and friday on here and then we'll be posting our patreon show we're, we're changing our schedule on there for the next couple months uh to uh, tuesday and thursday uh it's tuesday for our tier twos yes, and threes and it's... then uh thursday for our tier mm -hmm. for all of our tiers yeah uh no, we've gone nine months straight recording eight shows a week, three double recording days. And hey, make sure you guys check out our YouTube channel because on most Fridays, our personal YouTube channel, on most Fridays, we do a, a, kind of like an AMA hangout on a, on a live stream. And that's a lot of yep. fun too. So check us out there. Um, we'll still be doing that. So it just, it's, I'm not going to lie. It, it's nice to go to three shows because now we have one double recording yeah. day and that's a Friday. And you know our live stream our our live stream that we do is is really chill it's really so chill. it's it's, it's yeah, not it's really not like it's yeah. very it's very, very chill. chill it's so, very unhinged too if you want to yeah. see a it, it can go off the rails, a very yeah. different side of colby and i <laughs> go over to the live stream it's kind of it's kind of like reddit come to life mm, sometimes yeah, it really yeah. is we have relationship oh, advice we, we have <laughs> my you know we, we we have a lot of that stuff jackson so. we know you're listening yeah check us out jackson we know <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> We will put, I will put the, our YouTube channel, uh, our personal YouTube channel in the description down below. Check that out. But yeah, you know, it, it's a, it's nice. I'm not going to lie. It's nice. We've done nine, nine yeah. months, right. Since our last break. So it's nice to get down to three shows a week for a couple. And, and don't worry, the Mariners signed somebody on a Tuesday. We'll, we'll, if we can, we'll yeah. hop on and, and we'll, we'll do, do a show a on a Tuesday. Like we're not, we're not, we're not going to be strict about it. And, and, you know, maybe sometimes one of us can't record on a Friday. So we'll record on Thursday, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting next week, you'll get us. Um, and then Tuesday, Thursday for our Patreon show uh, instead of Monday, Wednesday. So, yep. All right. Uh, Preach. That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Padnode, I'm Titan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z and Colby at CPAT11. That's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast featuring the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Yacht see app of youtube and wherever you get your podcasts just like us and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day and a beautiful baseball weekend and we'll see you on monday peace